Hi, I'm Dan from Ozgel. And I'm Trent from Soft Ops. And today we're going to have a chat to Trent from Soft Ops, who is the developer of the Soft Ops application. All right, firstly, thank you for joining us, Trent. Um, you've been, you've had a huge impact on the community uh, with your application, uh, Soft Ops, which you can get on Android and, and iPhone as well. Yeah, it's right? every platform, that's right. That's awesome. Now, tell us a little bit about how you got involved in Joel and what led you towards developing that app. Yeah, right. Um, so, it's, look, it's, it, for me, I think like many, many people uh, have, you know, we've always been interested in things like uh, Airsoft and all that sort of stuff yep. internationally, but it's just not available. It's not something we can do here in Australia. And uh, I really got involved in the the kind of boom around, I think it was late 2018. Yep. Uh, I, I, like many others, I think saw this video of someone playing at Nuketown and it was, it was on YouTube and it was called something like Airsoft in Australia. And yep. in my head, I'm thinking, hang on a minute, that's not, that can't be illegal. Has something changed? And, you know, from there on, I just went straight down the rabbit hole. I found out what gel ball was, what gel blasters were. And funnily enough, at the time, I was actually staying at a place where we had been driving past uh, one of the major retailers on a regular basis, and I had absolutely no idea. Wow. So, yeah, basically. And that was Tac Edge for the record? Yeah, we, it was. We spoke about this after. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so it was, it was Tactical Edge down at Ormo. Uh, so I went in there and, look, you know, they looked after me. I got a couple of blasters for, for me and the missus, and went out and, and, and started playing. Um, and look, it was, it was really, really good. I, it kind of, for me, it, it captured my attention straight away. Um, but you know, in terms of where or why I launched Soft Ops and, and went down that path, I mean, I think, especially, especially in the early days, uh, I, like many others, you know, you, you, you get your hands on these job blasters. They're so cool. Yeah. You want to go play with them. Where do I play? Right. Like yeah. y- it's, you get to figure out where can you go play? Uh, you know, where is, you know, where is it safe to play? What are the games like? What to expect? That sort of thing. And so as a, as a part of that, I started doing a little bit of research, figuring out where I can play. And then this kind of penny dropped and I thought, well, hang on, if I'm doing this, surely other people have the same question. So yeah. I started to compile a list and, and that's kind of where Soft Ops started was the, the battle list, which I was posting on a weekly basis of, you know, times and games and prices and all that sort of yeah. cool stuff. And, uh, and, and that was a litmus test and, and that got really popular. So I thought, you know what, it's probably easier for this to be both for me and for other people for this to be in an app. So you can just pull it up at any time uh, and see where can I play? Uh, what's close? How much does it cost? All those sort of things as well. Yeah. Next thing you know, it blew up. And yeah. I mean, look, I've seen the app myself. Um, I, I do use it myself as well. Yeah. Now, the, the app is, it's really crisp. It's, you know, the presentation's pretty amazing. So you've obviously got some kind of a, a design background and, and you're obviously doing some kind of coding in there. So tell us a bit more about your background. Like what, what has allowed you to be able to do that? Yeah, right. Um, so it's kind of a funny one for me. Look, I... I have a really mixed background between things like animation, design, game design, um, all that sort of stuff, as well as coding. And yep. it, I've, I've come up from this really weird path where I, you know, I actually, when I left school, I went to the Defense Force Academy and then through a series of events ended up leaving. Um, and I went and started working for an insurance company. And, and through that, I ended up reporting and doing analysis and, and data science and that sort of stuff. So I actually learned to code as I kind of went. Um, and then in parallel to that, I was also studying things like animation, uh, and that's where I was doing a bit of game development. And it just got this really weird mix of skills that let me go away and, you know, if I wanted to go and create an app, right, it meant I could go and do that and I could focus on things like user experience and, and really solving problems. And I think yep. for me, that I have this passion around trying to solve interesting problems for people, yeah. right? And, and hence, you get something like the app where we're just trying to fix that issue. Yeah. Well, the UX is on point for soft ops. I'll give you that much. It looks pretty amazing. Now, um, you did touch base on something there. So, ladies and gents, you probably didn't know, but fellow veteran here. Um, Now, uh, you told me offline that you had spent some time at ADFA and um, and eventually RMC. Um, Yeah. How how did you enjoy your time in defence? Look, so for me, I I went into ADFA after school. So, for those of you that don't know, uh, ADFA or the Defence Force Academy, you go there, you, you, you know, you regardless of which service you're in, uh, you start to do some of your basic training and you also start to get a, or so you get your uh, university degree as well. So that was a really good time. I actually, I really enjoyed, you know, going through that process. Uh, but at some point I, I realized that the, 
the options in terms of that degree weren't really what I was looking for. Uh, and so I, I was successful in, in convincing my staff, my supervising staff, to let me just skip over to RMC. Um, and so that was really cool, except I managed to injure myself in that process. And early on in that RMC training, uh, I actually got pulled out and basically said, they, they told me I had to get surgery in order to continue training uh, and to become an officer. So a long story short, I ended up uh, actually leaving the service as, you know, throughout that, that process, um, you know, with the full intent of going back. But because I was injured during that process, it means I actually was medically discharged. So I can't, or it's, sorry, it's difficult to get back in no matter how much I try. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, fair enough. Oh, well, good to know nonetheless. Now, um, what's your take on everything that's happened in South Australia in Jobal? Yeah, look, uh, South, South Australia is an interesting thing. I think, look, first and foremost, it's, it's really, really sad, um, you know, to see what has happened to all of the businesses, like not just the players, right, but all the businesses and, and everyone that was involved in the scene, especially in South Australia. Um, you know, for someone to make a decision like that that was made overnight without any prior warning i think certainly in hindsight for them i'm sure people realize now that was not the best way of going about it and yeah. uh, you know it's, it's one of those things you got it, it i kind of understand the position they're in where a decision has been made right regardless of of how they came to that decision uh, or, or what that political stance may have been uh and but as a part of that decision it's like well if we're going to say hey you know everyone has to have licenses or whatever else overnight uh, the balance that they're playing then is if they tell everyone in advance then yeah. they run the risk of everyone offloading all of these items that are going to be prohibited the next day right um so it's it's really tough i just think it was extremely poor t uh, timing and it definitely seems a little tone deaf to be making that kind of decision that has such a large impact on people's income their livelihoods and all that sort of stuff uh, in the middle of something like COVID 19. Exactly. Um, and, you know, and that doesn't even take into account this. Uh, absolutely. There are a lot of players and hobbyists out there that are impacted as well. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, one of those biggest impacts is absolutely the people that are working around the industry. Yeah. It's the employees, the business owners, the people who have put everything on the line yeah. to have a go at this and, yeah. and make something of themselves in this industry. Absolutely. And then yeah. next day, they are legally not allowed to, to continue to, to do what Same, they're doing. isn't it? Yeah. No. Um, I, I know two of the stores that were down there, the, two of the brick and mortar stores, um, just for the process of closing up shop, it cost them over $70,000. You know, that's to close up. You know, that's and this, this is a business who's just been told they can't uh, continue to trade down there. You know, it's, yeah. it's just nuts. But uh, hopefully we see that um, draw to an end sometime soon and yeah. uh, see a positive outcome for everyone in South Australia. That'd be really good. Yeah. Um, now, what do you see as the future in Gelball? That's a really good question. Um, look, you know, it's something that I actually do talk about a lot with uh, some of the guys I'm kind of connected with in the community. There's, there's certainly, I think there's a, there's a growing anticipation that there's, there's obviously gel ball, that there's also an anticipation that maybe one day we do get airsoft, right? Um, but as a part of that, there's, I think there's, there's certainly some questions to be asked about what is so appealing about gel ball for the mass community, yep. right? Now, I know, especially in the Queensland fields and the, the stuff that I get around and see. Yeah. Uh, and, and actually, especially especially after our COVID restrictions here in Queensland have started to lift, um, the amount, the sheer amount of families and school groups and all that sort of stuff that are turning out to public sessions, right, has absolutely exploded. Right. So as an, as an example, um, you know, one of my regular fields that I play at is, is Spec Ops Paintball. Yeah. And Prior to the shutdown... You hey, Francis. <laughs> um, uh, prior to the shutdown, you know, you'd get a couple of people show up in higher blasters and that yeah. sort of stuff. But nowadays when I go there, I think, you know, depending on which you know, session you go to or whatever else, uh, you're easily seeing 20, 30 people show up and they're all hiring blasters, yeah. right? And, and those groups clearly know each other. There's a lot of families in there. There's like soccer groups, school groups, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And so one of, the, one of the things that I think is really interesting is people have made the comparison between... Uh, gel ball and laser tag, right? Yeah. And and obviously we know that those hobbies are quite different, but at the same time, you know, I remember when I was growing up, there was like laser force was the, was the thing. Everyone goes yeah. and plays laser force because it's the closest thing to skirmish you could play. Yeah. Um, whereas gel ball is in this really nice spot where although we do have hardened gels, it doesn't hurt as much as paintball. And, yeah. you know, as, as I've been told, it doesn't hurt as much as airsoft. So I think, look, I think it is 
absolutely going to continue to grow. Um, yeah. I think what's going to be interesting is seeing what technology in terms of blasters, right? Like what we st- continue to see, you know, I've seen yeah. the videos of the, the gas MP5K. That's freaking awesome, right? Yeah. Like it's really cool that we've got stuff coming like that. Because I know there's a lot of guys that, are, that uh, aren't necessarily chasing, you know, these, you know, absolute bullet hoses. They're looking yeah. for that, that simulation to be able to go around and do that stuff and, and play in close quarters. Um, you know, so it, it's going to be interesting to see if, if when that stuff starts landing and, and similar products like it, yeah. um, you know, whether or not, I wouldn't call it Milsim, but whether or not there's starting, you know, we start to see other kind of sub niches yeah. uh, start to pop up, right? Because we, we know that there's stuff like SpeedQB, SpeedSoft, Speedball Leagues, all that yeah. sort of stuff. And that's certainly one component because that's certainly something that people can sit back and watch and be really engaged with. Yeah. Um, but where, where I think we're yet to see any massive success is... Yeah that milsim space and it doesn't have to be the full-on i chuck yeah. a you know a rock on and, and hike for two days absolutely um but there's i think there's there's certainly space in there to to evolve as well and you know i've seen some um some good advancements in in that area as well like i mean we've got a k5 is it that's that's uh happening sometimes yeah, this weekend, yeah I think it's, it? it's, it's this weekend yeah, yeah it's rapid uh, helping yeah, out so at toowoomba yeah yeah so that'll be pretty cool because i know jason up at toowoomba skirmish hq yep. he's done a lot of milsim style stuff you've had mm. travis goldie yep. um suzanne river you know mm. a, a bunch of people getting together to really try and push yep. the milsim mil soft style of gameplay yeah and um yeah i think it definitely has a place you know we, we had this chat beforehand yeah. and um i think uh you know it, it could work as a bit of a you know, initially just a bit of a niche once people are in the hobby and they start playing, you know, a lot of people start with speedball or speed soft, that style of play, and then you start to see everything else that's out there. You go, oh, you know, I can get some gear from here. And so they buy themselves a rig and then, um, you know, slowly they add to it and uh, it's just like another hobby. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, yeah. I, and I think, you know, that um, that finding those different spaces to play is, it's, um, I think it's, it's a really important part of the hobby that I think a lot of people need to remember as well. Yes. There's a lot of, you know, especially in the guys that are, that are really, really involved, there's a lot of, oh, you know, speedball is whatever, we're going to go play Milsim, yeah. or vice versa, right? it goes both ways. Yep. Um, but I mean, like for me, I'm definitely down for all that tactical stuff. That is, it's always yeah. fun, right? Yep. Uh, but, you know, most recently I've been playing the, that, that speedball format with the Yakuza team as well. Yeah. And I think it's, for me, it's really important to like, don't, don't forget that, it's all around the same hobby. And exactly. you really should get out and try these things and, and give it a good go. And you'll actually start to see there's a lot of similarities. There's a lot of yeah. stuff that transfers between and you can really start to find that spot. I get see, out and try a bit of everything, you know? It's, yeah, it's good. exactly. Yeah. Like I see guys go from, uh, you know, from that tactical side to then play the speed QB or speedball theme format yeah. and they love it. And then I see guys, you know, start to get a bit over that and then they come back over to the, the tactical side and they have an absolute blast as well. So that's it. yeah, it's, uh, it's really important. No, oh, that's cool, man. That's cool. All right. Well, um, look, that's all we have for you today, guys. And Trent, again, mate, thank you very much for coming in. Yeah, of course. Um, really appreciate you giving your time here and also helping us out with uh, hosting the Air- Airsoftology podcast as well. That, that really was good great. Podcast. Um, but, mate, uh, let us know how people can find SoftOps on yeah. social media. Yeah, of course. So, SoftOps, of course, we're on Facebook, Soft.Ops. Same as Instagram, Soft.Ops. We're on YouTube. I think it's Soft.Ops. We're on there anyway. Uh, but most importantly, of course, I have the app out there. So all you need to do is go to HTTPS on forward slash forward slash softops.app. And as per always, I'm Dan from Ausgel. You can find Ausgel at www.ausgel.com.au. We're also on YouTube and Instagram under Ausgel and Ausgel Ammo. And we're also on TikTok. Uh, just search for Ausgel. All right, guys, thanks very much. That's all we've got for you today. See ya. See ya.